if if you had time for one more question, I would ask it to you as like a post reel because I have some people who support me called patrons on Patreon um, that I send them this kind of bonus material. Yeah, just go ahead. One question. One okay. question. Uh, speaking from a place of uh, you know, um, archetypes, collective unconscious. What do you see as sort of the psychic etymology um, and, and role um, in an archetypal sense of the shaman? Well, first of all, what we mean by the collective unconscious is simply that we humans carry a similar psychic structure and structuring process. That's what's timeless. Human civilization, as best as we can go back 10,000 years, hasn't changed very much. Technology changes, social structures change, values change, but the human psyche as a symbol-making animal has not changed very much. And so when, when you think about shamanism, shamanism is historically a person who has been blessed or cursed, as the case may be, with the capacity to psychologically, imaginatively enter the space of another person and help discern where he or she has in some way lost contact. In other words, part of the shamanic tradition was what we call mental illness was frequently that some evil spirit had captivated or captured or stolen a part of that person's soul. And the shaman's task was to enter into that person's space, discern what had been stolen, maybe what agent had stolen it, in some way under, undertake a symbolic journey to sort of recover and to deal with whatever that offending agent might be. And if you will, work out a treatment plan in order to bring that part of the soul back to the person. And, and Jung said, uh, let's not laugh at this tradition. He said, it's very similar to depth psycho psychology. In other words, I want to do X, Y, and Z with my life, and yet for reasons I, I don't understand, I'm not able to do it. So, well, what part of me is allied against another part of me? And what Jung is saying is depth work requires engaging in the, if you will, the war of energies going on within each of us in order to see what compensatory and, and behavioral and maybe attitudinal changes have to occur. You know, what do we owe the gods of the unconscious, so to speak, in order to be allowed to access that kind of energy or permission or to remove the blocking agent or something like that? Because it's, it's uh, a kind of archetypal understanding that we become being separated from ourselves. What are the separating agencies, if you will? Is it things that have happened out there? behaviors within ourselves, etc., etc., And how do I in some way compensate for that, maybe repair that damage in order to have that energy restored to me in order to serve the forward-moving nature of life's progression? Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you again for your time. I won't take you, uh, don't, I won't keep you any longer. Um, Dr. Hollis, thank you very much. You're welcome, James. Take care of yourself. Be well. Bye-bye.